Hey everybody, I am doing a quick tutorial on how to make your own flexible silicone molds, um, like this one, um, and it's super duper cheap, you don't have to go buy the putty stuff that's at the craft store, this is a, a way more economical way to accomplish this, and um, it's super duper easy, it is messy, I'm not going to lie, it is super duper messy, but all you need is some silicone. I should have had this ready. Some silicone caulk, uh, or I guess it is just a caulk, but it's just a silicone based uh, caulk. And you can get it in the big tubes, or there are some, some smaller um, tubes as well if you want to just practice it. I think this tube here was like $1.50. And the big one that goes in the gun, um, I think was maybe three, and this makes a lot. And I recommend that when you get by this, the tips, get one that has a resealable um, tip. So, because you're not going to use this whole thing in one shot. So, um, this helps keep it not dried out. Anyway, I like using the, the great big one because it's just a lot easier to do it with your husband's caulk gun. <laughs> I have another tool that I get to steal from him. He's super duper excited about that. And again, I should have been ready, but I'm going to put this new one in this gun because I just ran out my old one. And these um, are super duper easy to open. You just twist off the top and it's going to be sealed. And then you just take a scissor and chop it off. You may not, you may have to use a little bit of elbow grease. There we go. And then pop it off and there it is, it's open. So all you need is the caulk, as I've said, and um, here I'm using baking powder. I've also used baby powder. Um, my husband says it was his idea to do this. Uh, <laughs> But his, he said you're supposed to use cornstarch, but I didn't find any cornstarch in the in the pantry, so I just used what I found, which was baby powder and baking powder. So um, what I'm doing is I'm using a non-stick um, Teflon pad here, and I just sprinkled a little bit of the baking powder on there, and then I'm going to oh break the seal because there's a seal in here after. <laughs> After and what did I do with the top? There it is. There's a foil seal in there too. That's why I went coming out. There we go. Now let's try it again. So you squirt this out, and the ratio he said was equal parts uh, of the caulk and baking powder. But honestly, all I do is mix it up until it's really not accepting any more. So I have this here. Do not wear your jewelry because these are very hard to get silicone out of. So pull your jewelry off. The best non-stick surface I found is just plain old petroleum jelly. Get you some Vaseline. This is also what you're going to need for um, coating the molds so you can get stuff out of. I've just found that this is the best way to keep it off your hands and off your, off your stuff. So here I am just pouring a bunch of the baking powder on here. It's very much like making biscuits for you southern ladies um, or um, gnocchi for Italians. I can't think of what other things. You just put stuff in here and then let it soak it all up. I am starting out with a credit card. Well actually this is my Michael's reward card. And I'm folding it in. Just I'm keep folding it up just to mix all that baking powder in there. And I'll just speed this video up. Once you get a lot of this worked in, you can start using your hands. Just make sure to keep adding uh, more powder and um, Vaseline to your hands because once this sticks on you, it does not come off. 
Although I did discover a really awesome way to get it off, because like me, I just dove into it and didn't bother coating my hands. Um, but I took a handful of just regular sugar and put some dish soap in it and let it like equal parts of sugar and dish soap. And not only did it get all the silicone off and scrubbed all it off, but it also left my hands feeling amazing. It was so soft, um, kind of like a little mani, little home mani in your in your kitchen sink. All right. So once you've got this to the consistency that you like, the more, oh, the more um, mushy it is, the longer it's going to take to cure. Now this isn't a quick fix like a, the Ranger molding putty is where it dries in 30 minutes. This is going to need 12 to 24 hours to cure. And you really do need to let it to wait that long and um, heating it doesn't help. It just needs to sit. But the results are amazing. I'm really, really loving this. I'm going to put a little bit more on here because I think it can be just a little less squishy. All right, once you get it to the consistency that you want, and this is not an exact science, but my husband belongs to this, um, it's a maker group, and basically it's just a, a space where people have, um, a, it's just a shared space for making things, and when I can't even put a label on it because they're, I've been there, and it's just amazing. They've got like eight robotic arms and a 3D printer machine, which is a, it's a printer, but it prints with plastic, so you put in the image, and then it like if you put in an image of a rubber duck, it would actually print a rubber duck out of plastic. And total 3D. It's super duper cool. So all those cool toys that you would love to have and play with, um, they have them there. And since it's a subscription-based thing, you know, you pay per month um, to go in and access all this stuff. Like every month or two, they get a new awesome toy to, to share. It's, it's a lot of fun. And Anyway, one of the guys down there did a demo on making these silicone molds and my husband came home so excited because he knew I was just going to love this technique, but he came home with a rubber ball as an example and it was like those super, uh, super balls you get in uh, gumball machines. It was so bouncy and awesome. It was really cool. He was super duper excited to, to show me how to do this. All right, so once you get this to your consistency, I'm just kind of smoothing it out. It's not perfect or level. You could probably try to run this through a pasta machine. Um, I'm not going to because that scares me. I just kind of want this smooth with no, no cracks or big lumps or anything on it. No. What I am molding um, are just a couple of these little clay flowers that come on the little um, the stems at, at Hobby Lobby. They're really inexpensive, but they don't carry these these particular kinds anymore, so I'm never going to be able to get them again. So I'm going to go ahead and mold them. Um, and also, they're going to be a little bit smaller because I'm not going to shove them all in. You could if you wanted to, if you wanted to make a, a thicker um, mold here, you could. I'm just making mine more wide. Alright, so now all you do is you just kind of mash it in there. And that's it. Like, it could not be easier. Now, if you wanted to, you could go, and I am going to kind of do this, mash it around so it kind of covers the edges. So you get a clear delineated line there. And those will pull right out. Now, and I didn't show you the guys this, but before I stuck them in here, these have been um, brushed with some Vaseline. So I haven't have haven't had any trouble with them sticking without Vaseline before, but they're just easier to get out when you do. And I have a ton more space. There. So now I've got them in there. You can take them out as it is. Um, but I like to leave mine in there until they're done. It just seems to be a little bit easier. So I'm just going to move this to the side. 
get it out of the way. And uh, what I'm going to do is show you the actual, this bowl, I've got a bunch of stuff in here. There's like a fan and some buttons, some cameos in here. I've got like a bottle, um, all sorts of cool things, little Chinese symbols that were here, one of those little Chinese coins. Here's the impression of a ring, that vintage ring that was awesome. Um, so that's that. Let me zoom in a little bit. Whoa, too much. Okay, now you can use your polymer clay, but I am going to use friendly plastic. And it is, um, it comes in strips. Let me see if I can find one here. Here's a white one. It just comes in strips and it's just plastic that you heat up and mold. It's really kind of cool. So what I've done is taken a bunch of my scraps that just didn't work very well and I mixed them all up. <laughs> Because I'm going to paint this anyway, so uh, we don't need to have it um, colorful or anything, but you can if you wanted to. Um, and I'm going to just heat this up so it's nice and pliable. Alright, my friendly plastic is completely uh, molten, so I've got it on my little non-stick mat here. And I'm going to take a credit card, and again with the um, petroleum jelly, I'm going to leave it up a little bit. Leave it up just so it's easier to get off when the time comes. And I have already pre-done this mold here uh, with petroleum jelly. So I'm just going to scoop some up, super duper easy, and then put it in here. That should just come right off. Now, get some on my fingers here. And then you just, since it's molten, you can just mush it around. Now it is hot, so you want to be you want to be pretty careful with this, just so you don't burn anything. And make sure you mash it all into all those crevices and kind of even off the surface. And that petroleum jelly makes it a nice slick surface. I'm a The harder you mash on the edges of it, the thinner it gets. So when, and I'll show you an example in a second, um, it, the easier it is to clean up, up the edges when you're using this friendly plastic. Now with clay, you can just kind of scrape it off. It's not a big deal. I just use the plastic because it's, um, I just like to, the lightweight and I don't want to bake it. I just want it to be done. Um, and then you also don't have the fumes and such. So, I want to flatten off that surface here. It's already cooling down substantially. Alright, so that's all you do. You just mash it in and you're done. You put it aside, let it dry. Now, here's what I did of a um, door plate. Now, this is the actual plate or a um, handle plate. It goes on with cabinets. There's a knob that should be here, but I just like the design. It's very pretty, very ornate. Um, but it's kind of hard to attach. So I made a mold out of it. And this is one of those intricate molds that uh, it's got a lot of holes and raised areas. So when you're uh, putting this stuff in, you want to really rub down on these raised areas where the holes are to make it really thin. That way, as you can see here, um, the plastic is still there, but it is really, really thin and it's gonna make it a lot easier to, to grab a, um, a tool like a paper piercer or something and just clean that up a little bit. So, I mean, that's awesome. It's the same thing. <laughs> I just need to paint it now. So, super duper cool. Um, so far, my favorite has been, and this one may or may not be ready to take out because I just made another one. This is a, let me zoom out a little bit, a actual door plate. And here's the original right here. I found this at an antique store. There was a pair of them, and they're so pretty. Um, already painted and grunged up, but again, they're heavy and, yeah, hard to attach. So, um, I made, yeah, this one's not ready to take out. It's still, it's still warm, but I did make, ooh, 
this one. And this is the one that I made out of plastic. So here's the original and here's the one that I made out of plastic. And I just painted it with some gold metallic paint, threw on some crackle glaze on top of it, and then white paint. So it's all crackles and and all, all sorts of cool stuff. It turned out really cute. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. But isn't that neat the way it just takes on the, all their shapes and the, I promise you see there's the back of the plastic it is plastic so oh, this is still a little wet with the paint so this has been a lot of fun I'm molding everything and so let me know how this works for you guys or if you have anything that you want to share I would love to see what you're molding because this is so darn addictive and it's so inexpensive I think you know for one of these cans, like I said, they were, you know, just a, a buck or two and for the big long ones and then, gosh, these baking powders are a dollar if that, so a lot of fun. Let me know how it goes. Thanks, guys.